Meanwhile, a new demand to get answers about the deadly attack on U.S. diplomats in Benghazi, Libya, more than a year later. We're now told some Republicans on the House Intelligence Committee are frustrated. They still feel they are not getting the, the truth from the Obama administration. One member has now sent a letter to the House Speaker outlining the most critical questions still hanging out there from this member's perspective. This, as serious concerns are raised now about a 60 Minutes report on Benghazi and whether it contained what the critics are calling lies. Let's bring in our chief national security correspondent, Jim Shudo. He's been looking at all of this for us. What are you seeing over there, Jim? Well, Wolf, as you know, the Benghazi story has been infused with politics since the beginning. Today, there are new questions about the account of one of the key witnesses and now new accusations that even some of those questions are politically motivated. We talked to the key witness at the center of the attack and others to get at the truth. The question has hounded the administration since the night Ambassador Christopher Stevens and three other Americans were killed in Benghazi. Why didn't the U.S. do more to keep them safe? A CBS 60 Minutes story reignited the debate, citing repeated security warnings before the attack by a private contractor. But now parts of that story are being called into question. The contractor, who used the pseudonym Morgan Jones for his safety, trained local guards there. I was saying these guys are no good, you need to, you need to get them out of here. Ambassador Stevens' deputy and a top U.S. security official in Libya told CBS they had made similar dire warnings about security at the compound. Accounts which together prompted renewed demands from Republicans for access to witnesses, with Senator Lindsey Graham even threatening to hold up all administration's nominees. Not because I want to shut anything down, it's because I want to open something up that's important. I want to open up the truth about Benghazi. However, an incident report obtained by CNN and first reported by the Washington Post revealed inconsistencies in Jones's account. In his book and to CBS, he said he went to the hospital after the attack where he saw Stephen's dead body and then returned to the compound, scaling a wall and assaulting one of the militants. The incident report, which also revealed his real name, Dylan Davies, states those things never happened. In a statement to CNN, Jones said, quote, the account in my book is consistent with what I gave to the FBI and U.S. authorities about what happened in Benghazi. His co-author Damian Lewis told us Jones has never wavered in his story. He's been absolutely consistent in his story from the word go. Not only that, he's the kind of guy who downplays his role. Jones says he never saw or signed the incident report, but the version of events in it matches lies he told his supervisor to hide the fact that he had disobeyed his orders not to enter the compound that night. Jones has said that releasing the report without redacting his real name has put him into danger. Republican Congressman Jason Chaffetz, a vocal critic of the administration's handling of Benghazi, sees politics at play. To take a covert operator and purposely release his real name for the, for the consequence of endangering his life and his family's life is intolerable. I, I believe it's retribution for coming out against the administration. Well, the administration would not comment on that allegation, but today one more revelation that CBS had failed to disclose that Jones's books is being published by a CBS-owned company in an interview with the New York Times, CBS correspondent Lara Logan admitted that was a mistake not to disclose. However, CBS News chairman and 60 Minutes executive producer Jeff Fager told CNN in a statement, quote, we are proud of the reporting that went into the story and have confidence that our sources told accurate versions of what happened that night. We heard the same thing, Wolf, from Jones's co-author, uh, but still some questions certainly to be answered here. Jim Shudo reporting for us. Thank you. Still ahead, media coverage of Obamacare now in the crosshairs. Are reports too tough? Are they not tough enough? Uh, the debate is intense. We'll have details and an historic vote for change. First talk about race, the surprising election results in Detroit.